So welcome to the 1990 series. My name is Amanda O'Shea from the Serendipity Experience and I have a very special guest here today, Mr. Jamie Smart, a Sunday Times best-selling author. Jamie, it's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you. It's a lot. Thank you, Amanda. It's really been nice catching up before we, before we hit record and all that yeah, sort of stuff. That's been yeah. lovely. So you're in Nottingham today. I am. Oh, Nottingham. So I'm in sunny Spain, which is actually raining today, which is unusual for us, right? Uh -huh. Yeah, it's unusual. But I wanted to give thanks to you, Jamie. Doing this little series is about um, all those people that have really been a part of my journey, whether they realize that or not. And that includes, you know, the people, you know, you talked about your best selling book. Um, your books have been part of, you know, part of my journey. And, um, you know, when Clarity first came out and the little book of Clarity and results, and they, all, they were all part of, you know, I really, I really learned a lot from your book. So thank you, thank you. But I know how much effort goes into, uh, into writing a book and getting it out there, let alone making it. Yeah. Better. Yeah. It, it, oh, come on. I, 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 it's a real, golly, I feel very fortunate to have been in a position to write a book. I very feel even more fortunate to have written a book that some people read because so many books get written and then nothing. But I feel even more fortunate that I've written a book that people read and then tell me that it's made a difference to them. Yeah. And so I'm grateful. I love, I love hearing from someone who actually read it and it did, you know, they got some. Yeah, sure. And I do have it actually. I've been working in um, a treatment center in Spain for the last three years and your books have been here so they've been read by many you know and uh, and it's really nice actually because i think especially when somebody we get a lot of businessmen in and and you know reading your book they can relate to it mm. because they relate to it from the, sort of a business sense which is really really you know that's really really good for me and i was just saying that in the treatment center i also have so i have i have all the all the sort of um books that are written from the you know, the three principle understanding or the inside out understanding um, and the clarity understanding. And I always have the missing link. That's always a book that is sort of, you know, on the side, just left, just left around. Because it's one of those books that you can kind of just pick up and actually read any little paragraph of. Yeah. But I loved, you know, I heard you saying something about what you had seen or recently you know when you picked up the missing missing link by sydney banks would you would you share that again I'd love to yeah know. and let me let me give you some context i first got given a copy of the missing link by a friend of mine in 1999 well someone you may know actually uh, aaron turner so aaron turner gave me a copy of the missing link in 1999 and i read this book and i was like yeah it, it was it was paradox because like this is very simplistic all this so i i tossed it because what i read was sort of a mix of spirituality which i was familiar with from aa and and uh kind of what i thought was something more cognitive like it's to do with thinking and at the time i was into nlp and all that sort of stuff i'm like it's way more complicated than that so yeah, it's <laughs> and and then uh i I came back to it a couple of times and each time I was like, no, and then now it's one of my things. So, so the missing link kind of stalked me. Anyway, I, it's, it's one of my favorite books now and I was sitting down eight or nine months ago to read it. And I thought, yeah, I'll start at the beginning of the book. And the, the introduction of the book is just like two or three sentences. Uh, and Sid, Sid says, the thing about the missing link, by the way, is like, the writing in it is so economical. It's so sparse, like it's a few sentences per page, like dynamite in those sentences. And so uh, I, uh, I sit down to read the introduction. And the introduction is one page. And it says, uh, there are people in this world who believe that miracles do not occur. I can assure such skeptics that they do. With hope and faith as beacons, anything is possible. And I read those words and it like took my head off. I just fell out of all 
this thinking I'd had about myself and about my life and about the world and about work and business and all these things, all thinking, thinking that didn't even look like thinking. It's just like, that's life, that's reality, that's it. And I fell free of that and into the moment. And it was beautiful and just kind of touched that, uh, you know, that essence that, that, that's at the heart of all of us, you know. Yeah. There's a, there's a, a quote by Tillard de, Desjardins. He says, uh, we're not human beings having a spiritual experience. We're spiritual beings having a human experience. But uh, that it looks to me how it looks to me is uh, we're not human beings having a spiritual experience we're one spiritual being having seven billion human experiences and what happened what it seems like happened is for a moment I fell out of that illusion you know, separation and uh, jaminess and all that stuff and fell awake to the truth of who we all are. And it seemed to last a long, long time, but it was probably about a half a second or so. That's the magic, huh? Yeah. That's the magic. But when I kind of came back to what we laughingly refer to as my senses, how it what I saw was, oh, you're going to have a beautiful life, and work you love, and you don't even need to know how that's going to happen. And that was shocking to me because that's so in, in opposition to a lot of how I think on a day-to-day -day basis and like a bit of strategy and make a plan and all that sort of stuff, which is all good. There's nothing wrong with that. But I really, really heard, I don't know, I just saw that there, for all of us, there's a kind of a, a bigger hand guiding us or something. And, you know, Amanda, if I, if I look back over my life, if I'm being really, really honest with myself, my whole life has probably turned on six or seven chances or insights that happened when I wasn't expecting them, you know, that had me throw myself fully into this understanding that had me fall in love, that had me move from Canada to the UK, that had me quit my job and become a trainer. Like it was probably six or seven, maybe eight occurrences or insights or whatever, despite all my planning and all that sort of stuff. And it just really struck me in those words, you know, and faith and miracles and that sort of that's not even my language i don't really <laughs> uh, i don't really groove with that stuff but it like you could put me on a lie detector and it, you know if you were to ask me what's true is it true that you're going to have a beautiful life and work you love and you don't even know how it's going to happen is that more true or is it more true that you need to figure things out and make the right moves and that sort of thing like it's a no-brainer the first one one the first one and then i go and act like it's the second one, the <laughs> one. The and, one. and isn't that good news you know for everybody like, well sure good news for me i don't know you, <laughs> everyone else can, <laughs> can, can can decide what they think about that but it looks like good news to yeah. Me, right? yeah yeah I see it like I see there's like this one like puppet hand, you know, and seven and a half billion little puppets, you know, but there's just this one kind of hand and then we're all kind of, yeah, being busy and getting on with it. But actually it's all coming from that one puppet hand. Yeah. So what do you think of the whole free will thing? Oh, I don't know. I, I, um, I go back and forth. I go back and forth with it, Is it you know. The free will, the illusion of free will. Uh, where does it, sometimes it looks like, yeah, we have free will. And sometimes it looks to me like, oh, I don't know. I don't know. Is it just, you know, just what's happening? Is there just will? <laughs> you know? Is yeah. there just will? So I'm playing with that a bit, actually. 
at, at the moment. And there are lots of times, lots of things look to me like the whole choice thing. Is there a choice? Is there just an illusion of choice? Is there? So there's still stuff that I play with. And sometimes this looks like it makes sense to me. And sometimes, sometimes it doesn't. Um, so that's what I love. We continuously, you know, continuously grow, explore. And isn't that interesting that I can listen sometimes to somebody speaking and I'm like, oh, that makes sense to me. And then I can listen to somebody else. Go, that makes sense too. And you're saying totally different things. Yeah. <laughs> right? Well, I remember, I don't remember who it was, but maybe Niels Bohr, he said, you know, the, at a shallow level, the opposite of a truth is a lie. You know, you've got true and false. He said, but at a deep, deep level, the opposite of a deep truth is, an, is typically another deep truth. Yeah. So it's, we're always, <laughs> we're here, here, you know? And well, I don't know. I don't know if his statement was a shallow truth or a deep truth. So it, it, <laughs> but we'll, I love the exploration. I still love it, Jamie. You know, I love it, even though it's been, I don't know. Since, I mean, when I first got introduced to this stuff, I mean, it, it blew my socks off. Mm. I, mean, I had one of those like, oh my goodness. And, and I still have a passion. I really have a passion even sharing it, talking about it, hearing it, you know, you know today, but also really getting on with just life, you know, in its normality is where I see it fits best. For, for me and, and, and I love that and I heard a lot of that really from the from the missing link I heard a lot of that pointing you back to just good old-fashioned common sense and then get get on with it you know like, and that's the difference for me that's what was special with this was well, for me it answered all the questions you know answered all the questions about human behavior really not that I condone or sort of what I would call bad behavior but I understand it and I understand where it's created from and so I'm so grateful. I'm grateful to to you and to to all the people that you've trained up who are who are sharing that message and the things that you do that make it easier for all of us. And you know, um, and yeah, to Sheila who heard it from you and blah blah. It's like I had you know I had a chat this morning with um, or yesterday with Stephen Desborough, and I was like, it's like pay it. Forward. I love Steve. Yeah, me too. We did a, a retreat. He was one of the facilitators on a retreat I had earlier in Spain and nice. I was like we're just like paying it forward right that's what it feels like just keep paying it forward and so I love the similarities I love the similarities that I see within like the 12-step program and the fellowships and you know at their core what they are is like really being being there for each other and, and paying it forward so so I love that so Thank you, thank you for, for everything and being here today. And um, yeah, thank you for being part of the 1990. Oh, it's a pleasure. Thank you for inviting me, Amanda. Thanks for re that's good going. <laughs> for reading the book and, and keeping the book going. So uh, yeah, good stuff. Jamie, lots of love to you. Love, love, Amanda. Bye. Thank you, thank you. Bye, everybody. Thanks for listening.